Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Matt and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Uh, their presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash GPACAC. And now to turn things over to our first presenter, Iowa State University. All right, thank you, Matt. And thank you everyone for being here. My name is Adam. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Iowa State University. And I'll go ahead and share my screen here. We see if we can kind of get things started. Okay, can everyone see that okay? All right. Fantastic. So my name is Adam, like I said, from Iowa State University. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Iowa State University, we are located in Ames, Iowa, which is just 30 miles north of Des Moines, Iowa, um, Iowa's capital. We'll kind of shrink it down here a little bit more. So we're about three hours away from Omaha, about three hours away from the Twin Cities. Um, and only about a five hour drive from Chicago and four from Kansas City. So pretty centrally located um, here in the Midwest. Iowa State University, how it breaks down is we have six undergraduate colleges. So we have our College of um, Agriculture and Life Sciences. That is gonna hold all of your um, agronomy, animal science, dairy science, um, things of that nature. We're really known for agriculture. Um, at Iowa State. We also have a very good college of business. So our IB College of Business is going to hold your management, HR management, accounting, finance, other majors like that. We have our College of Design, uh, which is going to hold our interior design, graphic design, and then our architecture program, as well as a few others. What Iowa State is also most known for is our College of Engineering. We have uh, 14 engineering majors, anywhere from aerospace to civil to mechanical, to computer software engineering. So a lot of great options there as well. Our College of Human Sciences is gonna hold everything pretty much with the human experience. So that also holds our School of Education with early childhood, elementary, and secondary education. And then uh, for pretty much everything else is our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. And that's gonna hold anywhere from history to music to computer science. So a, a lot of different um, majors at Iowa State. We have over a hundred majors, um, and this is very daunting to look at, I'm, I'm aware. Um, but Iowa State, we have tons of majors, but one thing we really wanna stress is um, you can come in as an open options major or an undecided major, and we can help you find that major. So you don't necessarily know what you have to, or have a good idea of what you might wanna study right away. We can help you find that along the way. So plenty of options at Iowa State. Uh, we do have a lot of on-campus housing. You don't have to live on campus for any amount of time, but 92% of our freshmen do choose to live on campus with us. It's just an easier way to meet people, um, and it's a great way to just start to build your community, especially if you're coming from out of state. We also have a lot of dining um, locations at Iowa State. We have uh, two gelato shops. We have a Panda Express on campus, um, Caribou Coffee, Starbucks Coffee. Everything is made um, locally and fresh, at all of our dining centers, um, all of our foods prepared at Iowa State. We don't um, market that out to a third company. So everything prepared fresh daily. And we'll talk a little bit about our admissions requirements. So Iowa State, we follow our region admissions index um, or our RAI score, and that is set by the state of Iowa for all of the state universities. So essentially it's a formula comprised of your ACT um, score. We're gonna take that times three. We're gonna take your high school GPA times 30 then we're gonna add on your number of core courses in high school and take that times five, add that all together and you're gonna get your RAI score. So one thing that students always ask is what are the core courses? So that's gonna be your standard um, math, English, science, social studies and foreign language. Uh, we do have some requirements for foreign language just kind of depending on the college you're interested in. Uh, if it's our college of liberal arts and sciences, you're gonna take, you're gonna just need two years um, to be admitted into Iowa State, and then just a third year to graduate from Iowa State. Our College of Engineering, you just need two years of a single foreign language. 
um, and you're good to go. So you can get those done in high school or you can get those done um, at Iowa State um, as well. And we are test optional for you seniors. Uh, so we'll just shift away from the RII and put more focus on your high school GPA and your core courses. So here you can kind of see our application process. Um, you can apply on our website. There is a $40 application fee, but you can self-report your GPA, your test scores, and your core courses. We do offer a lot of scholarships at Iowa State, uh, especially for out-of-state students. So definitely check that out on our website. Um, and we can also set up a visit um, if you're looking for some more information to kind of talk about things a little bit more in depth, but also when you're filing your FAFSA, definitely make sure to um, include Iowa State on there as one of your top 10 schools. That way we can get that information and send you a financial aid award. So for next steps, um, for you juniors um, and seniors, I would say visit campus. That's gonna be the best way to experience Iowa State. Then um, you can apply um, as soon as today, as well as then you can complete our one app for all of our internal scholarships, file the FAFSA, fill out your housing, register for orientation and get you ready for things in the fall. But Iowa State, we have a lot to offer. This is a very uh, brief brush over, but um, definitely if you have any questions, um, there is my contact information for my email, as well as my phone number. And we'd love to chat with you about any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I am Kayla McIntyre. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions over at Embry-Riddle at the Prescott campus. We have two of them. Um, and so we have, um, I'm here with my colleague, George DeWeese, and he is the uh, admissions counselor over at the Daytona Beach campus. Um, so just to kind of go over some facts about Embry-Riddle, we have been ranked number one in aerospace engineering uh, for multiple years, uh, and that's by US News and World Report. We have the first and only College of Security and Intelligence in the entire country. It has now since been combined with our School of Business also. We have the first and only uh, aerospace physiology program um, that was ever uh, created. That's over at our Day Daytona Beach campus. And what that one is, is basically the study of space on the body. So when astronauts and, and people are up in space, uh, the zero Gs and the lack of gravity does take its toll. Uh, on the vascular system, you lose muscle mass, bone density, and it is the study of how to create uh, a safer environment for astronauts and explorers. We are ABET accredited, um, which is really important, basically means that our criteria or our, our curriculum meets certain criteria. That is really important. So when you're looking for universities, no matter what university it is, uh, try to make sure it's ABET accredited. Um, our graduates yield among the highest return on investment uh, in the entire nation. And what is happening is our students um, are getting higher paying jobs. They're applying for higher paying jobs right out of college. Uh, so they're making more income in relation to what they paid for tuition. We have been ranked top uh, in Arizona and Flor Florida for the highest level of quality and affordability. I will let George take over just really briefly um, and talk about the Daytona Beach campus. Thanks, Kayla. So yeah, we have two great locations. We have an East Coast, the West Coast, so our East Coast campus, Daytona Beach, Florida. As you can see, we have about 7,000 students at that campus. Uh, we keep our classes small at both campuses. We do project-based curriculum. So we, you can see our class size, and that's going to be starting uh, freshman year all through all four years. You're going to have small classes. Uh, we have lots of clubs and organizations, lots of things to get involved with, both professionally and for just fun. Um, we're in CAA Division II in our athletics, and the Daytona Beach campus, we have all branches of ROTC, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, some really great scholarships there. Um, but yeah, we're, it's a great location. Um, we're just an hour north of the Kennedy Space Center, hour east of Orlando, so a great place uh, to go to school and, and enjoy yourself. So I'm going to let Kayla talk about our Prescott campus. For our Prescott campus, um, everybody thinks of Arizona as being hot and dry and cactus, and you're right, it is, uh, but that's the southern half of the state and we're considered northern Arizona. Um, so we are up about 5,400 feet. Uh, we have four seasons, no humidity. Um, right now it's about 70 degrees outside. That's how it was most of the day. It's quite beautiful. Um, we've actually been ranked number one cleanest air in the entire nation. 
Um, so you can come up here and literally get a breath of fresh air. Uh, we, all do, we do also get snow in the winter, uh, like I said, all four seasons. And we're about 20 to 30 degrees cooler than Phoenix at any given moment. Um, so it's pretty nice. Uh, we have about 3,000 students on our campus, so we're a little bit uh, smaller than the Daytona Beach campus. Uh, our average class size is, is still small, about 24. Um, so I would encourage you, and no matter what university you're looking at, ask them what their uh, class size is. I think over in Arizona, our, our biggest classroom only has about 60 seats. Um, a lot of schools have really large classes. So that's something just, just to ask. Uh, we also have over 200 clubs and organizations on campus. And that can be, uh, like George said, business or just something for fun or professional. Um, we also used to have uh, what we call the sweater vest club. And they literally wore sweater vests and gave free hugs on, on uh, Thursdays. So there is a club for everybody. Uh, you can always create your club as well, a, a different one if you'd like. Uh, we have 10 um, sports and we're NAIA for our division. Um, and then we also have Air Force and Army over in the Arizona campus for ROTC. We don't have Navy or Marines on our side. So some of the outcomes with our graduates, 94% uh, of graduates are employed or continuing education within one year of graduation. That's really great number. Uh, nationally, I think it's somewhere around 34%. Um, so our, our graduates are actually getting jobs in their degree field. Uh, there's a strong, in, strong industry outlook. Um, they need a lot of pilots, engineers, security and intelligent analysts. Um, the, the jobs are out there. Career services, we have a career expo every year. We have um, resume editing, mock interviews, uh, and we have over 137,000 Embry-Riddle alum who love to work with our students. They hand deliver applications. It's fantastic. For the application process, you have to go directly through our website. Uh, it is right there. We need transcripts, official uh, high school transcripts. Uh, we, do, um, we don't need anything else. Everything else is optional. Test scores, optionals, letter recommendation, essay, resume. Highly uh, encouraged, but all optional. When it comes to financial aid, uh, over 90% of our students receive financial aid of some sort. Any student with a 3.0 GPA will be reviewed for that. Um, and then we take any external scholarship that uh, a student can get and we will use it. So we basically stack uh, all of the financial aid. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, next up is Columbia College, Chicago. Hi, everybody. My name is Alfredo Echevarria. I am your admissions representative here at Columbia College, Chicago. Um, as you can see, we are located in Chicago, Illinois, um, in our South Loop neighborhood. So if you know anything about Chicago geography, if you ever heard of the Bean or Grant Park, we're about a five, 10 minute walk from both of those. Um, Columbia College, Chicago is a four year private liberal arts college. Uh, we mainly focus in the creative industry. So if you're a student that really flourishes um, and thrives in a creative environment or does well being around other creative students, this might be a really good place to look at, uh, you know, post high school. Um, so when it comes to uh, numbers, uh, really quickly, uh, we're close to about 7,000 students um, that comprise a majority of our uh, undergraduate students. So we're considered a medium-sized college. And um, we do have graduate degrees here too, but that it tends to be a little bit more of a smaller community around 200. Um, and then this year we did enroll close to uh, close to 2000 new students. A majority of those were incoming freshman um, applicants, but we are also very transfer friendly. So I always encourage students, you know, if it doesn't work out enrolling here as a freshman, um, feel free to uh, enroll at a local community college or university, earn some college credits um, and then transfer over to Columbia. We do also have transfer specialists that can help you with pre-advising, uh, which means, you know, let um, giving you advice on which classes to take back home so that they uh, transfer over successfully at the college. Uh, we do have over 60 different majors and programs. It's gonna be a combination of majors, minors, online certificates and graduate degrees. Um, and when it comes to residence halls, about 70% of our freshmen do live on campus for two reasons. I always like to stress location. You get to live in downtown Chicago as a college student and access. A lot of those opportunities like internships or jobs will exist in the downtown area anyway. So again, uh, it's a great combo 
uh, to live on campus as a student. And when it comes to diversity and inclusion, this is a big part of our identity here at the college. 57% um, of uh, students identify as students of color and about a third of students identify within the LGBTQIA spectrum. So that's a big part of our identity. As I mentioned, um, you'll see it all over our mission statement. Um, you'll see it representative on campus. Um, you know, whatever walks of life you come from, um, life experience you bring, identities you have, uh, we want to make sure that you have a platform to share those stories with us and ultimately to the world. Um, when it comes to the average high school GPA, it's about a 3.34. Of course, we don't hold you to that if it's a little lower. Um, you know, we do review applications holistically. So uh, we'll look at everything that you submit. So things like um, tra uh, your transcript, your recommendations, your writing sample, all those things to make a decision. And we are also test free this year. So we know that some students don't do well or, or perform well um, in standardized testing. So we won't even look at that as part of your admissions decision. Really quickly on financial aid, you're eligible for three scholarships upon applying. The first one is completing an application, which makes you eligible for an academic merit-based scholarship. The second is a financial need-based scholarship that's based exclusively on your FAFSA. And then the third is a talent-based scholarship, which is based on any portfolio or audition that you submit. It's important to know for the last one, uh, for BA applicants, it is optional, but highly recommended. For BFA or BMUs, applicants, it is required as part of your application. So 99% of freshmen earn some kind of financial aid from us and about 97% of transfer students earn some, time, some kind of financial aid from us as well. Um, when it comes to the actual environment that you'll be uh, um, immersed in at Columbia, we do use you know uh, the wording, a hands-on immersion in your field from year one. So what does that mean? Um, like some colleges in the US, they might make you focus on your liberal arts requirements your first two years and your major related classes your last two years. At Columbia, we don't do that. We let you jump in into your photography classes or graphic design classes, you know, year one, semester one, day one, if that's what you want. Um, and we do have small class sizes. There are about 15 to 18 students per class. Um, this is a great way for you to network, uh, you know, connect with other students, um, ultimately work with collaborators that will first be in your classroom, then ultimately, um, you know, the collaborators that you'll have post-graduation. And then faculty, they do live what they teach. We make sure of that. It's also very common to hear of students um, earn some kind of internship or job from faculty because they still work in those industries that they're teaching you about. Really briefly, these are the, uh, you know, the schools that we have at the college. Um, so that's audio communication and writing, media arts, performing arts, and then visual arts and business. And then lastly, I do have um, some points I want to make on student life. You know, we do have over 70 different clubs and organizations. Anything that exists, uh, uh, anything that you like, it probably exists already. So things like Black Student Union, Latino Alliance, we have an anime club, a DJ club, a competing choir. Um, and if anything doesn't exist, of course, you can make your own with student life. Um, there's hundreds of different campus events every year. I always tell students there should never be a reason why you're bored. There's always something to do. Also, you will be living in Chicago. So there's always some new neighborhood to explore as well. Um, and we also have resident centers designed for creative students. So there's one resident center um, called the Dwight. Um, they have one floor that's completely vacant. Um, and every year we encourage students to graffiti the walls, to create murals on the walls, to exert that creative energy that you have within you um, and use it in a healthy way. And then every year we paint it white and then every year we encourage you to do whatever you want on that. Uh, so that's Columbia in a nutshell. Um, again, my name is Alfredo Echeverria. You can uh, shoot me an email over here, give me a call there, and whenever you're ready to uh, start and submit an application, you can go to columb.edu slash apply. Uh, so thank you so much for having us here today, and I'll hand it back to our facilitator. Thanks very much. Uh, next up is Rockhurst University. Alrighty, um, hello everyone. My name is Bibi Solomon and I work with Rockhurst and thank you for taking the time to join us today. 
So um, Rockers University is a Jesuit institution located in Kansas City, Missouri. And in short, a Jesuit education prepares you to lead, serve, and pursue social justice. So these are three words that we always, um, one of our paramount objectives, if you will. Our curriculum is based on a liberal arts um, um, curriculum which will help mold our students into individuals who have cognizance and ideals. And we combine instructor-driven learning with real-world experiences through internships, co-ops, job shadowing, undergraduate research starting your freshman year service and service learning classes. Rockers is located right in the heart of Kansas City, Missouri, um, and it sits on a 55 acre campus, which makes um, Rockers so unique in the sense that you get to have a small world or a small school experience with a total population of 3000 students in the big city. So you get the best of both worlds. The campus is only 10 minute walk from um, a hangout district in Kansas City called the Country Club Plaza, and it has several restaurants and stores and um, walking paths for, for people to run or jog or walk. Um, and we are also a few minutes away from downtown KC. Kansas City over the past few years has become super innovative and up and coming with a lot of, um, with lots of entertainment to fit all needs and lifestyles. And not only that, it, it is becoming a large hub for internships as well. And Rocker's faith and spirituality are valued as a component of the Jesuit education. And we certainly are a home for all faiths. We offer over 70 academic programs with several direct entry and pre-admit opportunities. And it's not really uncommon for our students to double major and still be able to graduate in four years. So you do get to pick your own journey. As a Jesuit institution, we are firm believers that 40% you learn in the classroom and 60% is outside. So Rockers has over 70 clubs and organizations to participate in such as um, Sorority Fraternity Life, Voices for Justice, Active Minds, Leaders for Environmental Awareness and Protection, and so much more. We are a Division II institution in athletics with 16 varsity sports and a member of the Great Lakes Valley Conference. And we offer various scholarships that are available to our students. Um, and, and what I always tell my students is that you would be super surprised at the amount of grants that you would qualify for. And for one is what's on the screen right now are merit um, awards that are solely based on your GPA or with your ACT, if it helps level you up, you automatically receive them and you receive them every year for four years. And we are now um, and we now accept super score in ACT. Rockers is a rolling admission institution, so we do not have deadlines. Um, so unless you're considering any of our direct entry programs, you are not required to submit your standardized test score. However, we do require your official transcript, which means it needs to come directly from the high school. We have our own application, which is free of cost on our website. And then we are also a member of the common application. And finally, we are open um, for on-campus visits and virtual visits as well. And um, we hope to see you on campus soon. Thank you. Thanks very much. Our next presenter is Oklahoma Christian University. Okay, so sorry about that. I was having a hard time getting the, the video and audio thing going here, but uh, my name is Glenn Elmore. I'm an admissions counselor here at Oklahoma Christian University. Uh, for those of you who have maybe never heard of Oklahoma Christian before, we are a four-year Christian university. We're based about 15 minutes from downtown Oklahoma City, so we're in a really nice suburb called Edmond. Uh, you get kind of the nice benefits of that, but also you're 15 minutes from downtown OKC, meaning you've got 
jobs, internships, concerts, Oklahoma City Thunder basketball, all within easy driving distance. Uh, we have a little over 2000 students at OC. So it's kind of a good in-between size where it's big enough to provide you all of the opportunities you're looking for in a college experience, but still small enough that your professors are gonna know you by your first name. Uh, the vast majority of our class, about 85% of them have less than 30 students in them. So really great opportunities for you. There are kind of three main things that I wanna talk about today. The first off is your academic experience at OC. I can promise you, you're gonna get an outstanding academic experience that is going to prepare you for your next step, whether that's grad school or going straight into the workforce. The second, you're gonna have an opportunity to grow in your faith. So we'll talk a little about that. And then the third is just opportunity in general. Let's start out with academics. So at Oklahoma Christian, we do have over 80 different degree programs. Um, there are a ton to choose from, but probably some of our top are gonna be in the STEM areas. So things like computer science, engineering, uh, nursing, pre-med, have some really good options in business as well. And then we have some kind of random ones. Uh, so we're actually top 50 in the world in gaming and animation. So if you're interested in video game design, check us out for sure. Uh, we're also top 20 in the country in interior architecture. So a ton of opportunities for you. Now, Oklahoma Christian is a private Christian university. That being said, we have a ton of scholarship opportunities for you. And we also don't do in-state and out-of-state tuition. So wherever you're from, you're going to pay the same thing at Oklahoma Christian. The majority of our students, over 95%, have some kind of financial aid. And so our thing is, if you want to be in this environment at OC, we want to make that possible. Uh, we're going to take a look at your test scores and your GPA for scholarship opportunities. We also have performance-based scholarships for athletics, for debate, for music, for drama and theater. So many different options for you there. Moving over to spiritual life on campus. Uh, we are Oklahoma Christian University, and we take that second word very seriously. So we wanna give you the opportunity to grow in your faith at OC. And we wanna meet you where you are, wherever that is. We have a lot of students who do come from a Christian background. That being said, we also have students who come from all different kinds of backgrounds, some who have no faith background whatsoever. And so wherever you are, we just ask that you be willing to explore faith and take a look at these things. We have a program called Ethos, where you have to complete a certain number of credits each semester. It used to be just big chapel every day, about a 30 minute chapel, and that was kind of spiritual life on campus. But with the Ethos program, you have a lot of ways to get those credits. You can still attend one of many different chapels, some that are music-based, some that are speaker-based, one that's a yoga devotional. So if you're interested in yoga, you have that opportunity. But you can also get those credits by meeting one-on-one -on -one with a faculty mentor or going on a mission trip, doing a service project, hosting a Bible study with a group of friends. There are 70 to 100 different events every week. So you have so many opportunities to grow in your faith in a way that works for you. Now, I also wanna talk about opportunity. Like I said earlier, we are just 15 minutes from downtown Oklahoma City, which is a great place. It's growing a lot right now, but we still have not caught up to the big city traffic. So you have all the opportunities of a major metropolitan area without having to worry about where you're gonna park. We also have over 65 different student organizations on campus, everything from intramural sports to student government association. We offer different uh, multicultural organizations and social service clubs, which are kind of the Christian school version of fraternities and sororities. Um, also the community on campus is something that I really wanna highlight. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm actually the only admissions counselor at OC right now who did not attend OC. I went to a much larger institution with about 17,000 students. And I can honestly say I had a good experience there, but I know more professors at Oklahoma Christian than I knew at the school I actually went to. That's because they just go out of their way to try to get to know you. They wanna make sure you're doing well in their classes, but they also wanna make sure you're doing well as a person. And so they'll have you over to their houses for Bible studies or for lunch, just to get to know you and make sure you're doing well. So what do we do with all this information? Well, first off, you can apply right now at oc.edu slash apply. If you got a 19 on the ACT, a 980 on the SAT, you can know 100% you're going to be accepted at OC. We do also have test optional opportunities this year. And then my biggest piece of advice is come visit us if you get a chance. We are doing in-person visits right now. 
Since you tuned in today, you can use this fee waiver code, just the word STORY, S-T-O-R-Y, and that is going to allow you to apply for free to Oklahoma Christian. Every student we interview or we talk to has a story, and we want to be a part of yours. So the application's on us. And if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to us. Uh, this number that you see on your screen right now is a cell phone number for the office. And so we will happily answer calls or text this number. And you can also email us at admissions at oc.edu. I would love to see you on campus soon. And thank you so much for tuning in. Excellent. Thank you all. Um, so now we have some time for Q&A before we wrap up this session. I'd invite all of our presenters to join me back on camera and respond to this question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'll ask our presenters to respond in the same order that they presented. So Adam, you'll kick us off. Okay, yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I would say enjoy the process. There's a lot of colleges out there um, and you really just have to take the time to go visit them and then just start applying for places. Uh, everyone here wants what's best for you. Our admissions counselors, we just want you to go where you're gonna feel the most comfortable. It's your decision and you wanna make sure you're gonna go somewhere where you feel successful um, and well taken care of. So definitely enjoy the process, go on visits uh, and make the best decision for you. Um, I would think that um, I would encourage students to ask a lot of questions. Um, I think that that is the best way, aside from probably actually visiting campus, um, the best way to kind of see if that's going to be a good fit for you. Ask a lot of questions, you know, class sizes, admissions, um, you know, scholarships, what campus life is like, what it's like around the town. Um, you know, don't feel like you're asking too many questions. I would say, um, you know, check out some virtual options. I get it every year where some students say that they can't make it no matter, you know, what, what they try to do with their calendar. Um, I think with the pandemic, uh, a lot of virtual options have now made things a little bit more accessible in comparison to before. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, I'm sure we all have, you know, virtual tours where we can meet multiple people in one city and like us, admissions representatives, student ambassadors, if we're lucky, some faculty will jump in, um, but definitely check that out um, and see what you can find in the comfort of your own home. All right, uh, my advice with this, um, or like the college search process is kind of piggybacking off of Adam, but mine is a little specific and that is to attend the events that the schools have for um, prospective students. Um, and that is just a way for you to immerse yourself into that culture and really see if it's a good fit for you um, for the next four years or not. I have two pieces of advice really quick. First one, talk to your admission counselor, whatever school you're looking at, our entire job is helping you out. And for me, I mean, most of the admissions counselors I talk to just want you to find the place that's the right fit for you. So if I can help you just find scholarships for any college, uh, I wanna help you be able to go to college. Second piece of advice is visit campus if you get a chance. Uh, I compare it to kind of like looking at a tennis shoe, right? It could look really nice online, look like it's everything you need, but if it's not the right fit, then it doesn't matter. So come check us out in person and see if it's gonna be the right fit for you. Thank you all. Our next question is, uh, what is one thing you want students to remember about your institution? And back to you, Adam. Um, that's, that's a tough question. <laughs> there, there's so much. Um, I would say, I would say how Iowa State, we are a large university. We have about 30,000 students. But once you get into your own specific major, um, it really becomes your small community. So you're at a large enough institution where um, you do get to meet different students and different people from different walks of life to kind of learn and get a better um, understanding of the world around you, but also that you do have that personalized opportunity because class sizes, once you get past um, like your general education, class sizes are usually about 25 to 30 students. So you do have the opportunity to be in some larger lectures, but at the same time, um, you do also get to um, get more on a size down um, location once you get into your specific major and really get to learn um, and hear specifically from the people who are teaching. 
Yeah, I agree. This is a difficult question. Um, but I think that with Embry-Riddle, I'd like people to remember uh, that we have been ranked number one in aerospace engineering uh, for many years. Uh, we focus on engineering. That's kind of our passion, uh, but also students who want to become pilots. Um, but not just that. We have business and forensics and astrophysics and astronomy. It, it's just a really wide variety of programs that we offer uh, with small class sizes and you know your hands-on experience that very first semester uh, with mixing up the general ed classes. Um, so it, it's so much more than just STEM and just uh, engineering over at Embry Riddle. I would say something that I'd like students to remember about Columbia is, uh, you know, this these past few years we've devoted um, ourselves to being an anti-racist institution. Um, and that's something that we want to embody in our curriculum, in our everyday lives on campus. Um, it's even part of our mission statement now. Um, and we know that, um, you know, it's something like that is full of learning opportunities. It's full of mistakes. And we think that um, we want to let you know that as prospective students, we do ultimately want you to be part of that, that conversation that you'll be having on campus too, um, ultimately to keep each other accountable, um, to keep our instructors accountable, ac accountable, and ultimately, you know, be the world that we'd like to aspire to be one day. All right, the one thing I would love students to remember about Rockers, that is our core values. Um, so a little similar to Alfredo's statement there, um, over the past um, couple of years, Rockers has been um, very focused on ensuring that we build a uh, just or um, uh, an inclusive community to help our students and empower our students to create a just word world and, and become a part of that um, goodness that we hope to find in the world. So our core values are definitely um, what I would like our students to remember. I would say uh, don't don't think that just because Oklahoma Christian is a small university that we don't have the opportunities for you. You're going to have an outstanding opportunity to get some really good academics. Uh, we have several students right now in Harvard Law School, at Yale, uh, at all kinds of different institutions. Um, we also provide you the opportunity to go study in Europe, uh, to study in Japan. We have a lot of opportunities, but we're still in an environment where you are going to know people and you're going to be known by people. Um, if you want to be a big fish in kind of a smaller pond, OC is going to be a great place for you to really grow and be the best that you can be. All right. I have one more question before we wrap up this session. And that is, uh, what is one myth that you'd like to debunk about the college admission process? Um, college admissions process. I would definitely, if you're coming in with um, dual credit, classes from a community college or another four year, definitely talk with your admissions counselor um, because classes, you wanna make sure everything's gonna transfer in as friendly as possible. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you look at scholarship um, opportunities outside of each institution too. And make sure you read and look at those requirements because those scholarships will follow you pretty much no matter what school you decide to go to. Yeah, I, for, for us specifically, I would say that a myth that we hear frequently is a couple of things that we are either too expensive or too hard to get into. And I would say for any school, don't, don't let that deter you. You, do, you never know what scholarships you might, you might get or how it's gonna turn out. So just don't let that deter you. I, um, we have a lot of very average families coming to our university and they find a way to do it through scholarships and all kinds of ways. So just, you know, don't, if a, don't let you think a school is too hard or expensive to get into. Keep trying. Um, I would say, um, you know, nothing's set in stone, especially right now, you know, with applications coming through and um, you just being an applicant at the moment. I get students every year who uh, want to study, you know, graphic design only to find out that they'd rather do, you know, music technology, um, especially again, this early on, we can change things at a click of a button. Um, so don't feel like you're obligated or you're or at something, you know, set in stone at this moment. We can always have a conversation. We can always change things um, to your liking. Um, you know, as many times as you'd like, uh, at least up until like the first 
week of classes, and then that's a whole other conversation. But um, you know, we can always chat and, and accommodate you for whatever you, needs that you might want. Uh, so this is actually one of my favorite questions, um, yet George answered it for me, <laughs> uh, which is the private school, um, I, I can't afford it, uh, fear, because um, that's not the case. We have a little bit more leverage um, and we're able to work with our students closely to ensure that we either meet them halfway or, um, or, um, or, or just help them however we can. Um, the other thing, though, I will say is, um, the myth that we would like to debunk, that I would like to debunk is that um, um, you're bothering us. You're not. Um, we love getting questions from our students rather than you just trying to figure thing, things out on your own. That is our job and we do it because we like it. Um, so just remember um, that we are real humans and we can help you uh, however you need. Problem with going last is a lot of the good answers are already taken. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, as well as a private institution, um, just the idea that we're automatically going to be way more expensive, um, especially when you're looking at in-state out of tuition or out of state tuition. A lot of us in the private sector don't have out of state tuition. So you may actually pay less than you would at a state school in a different state. And also talk to us as your admissions counselor, whether you are 100% set on our school or not, like I said earlier, we want to help you be successful. And so be honest with us about where you're at financially. Be honest with us about what options you're considering. And even if you don't end up coming to Oklahoma Christian, I want to help you be successful in college. So whatever I can do to help, let me know. Thank you all so much. Uh, so that brings us to the end of this session. And I want to say thank you for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a quick survey. We do appreciate your feedback. Uh, you'll be able to find a recording of this session as well as the other sessions uh, at strivescan.com slash gpacac. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your evening.